First up, Windows. This is your childhood friend who's everywhere. Need to game? Work? Accidentally download a virus from a sketchy PDF? Windows has your back. It's like the Swiss Army knife of OSEs. Versatile, user-friendly, and occasionally bloated. Windows runs on 75% of PCs worldwide. That's why when it crashes, millions of people simultaneously cry into their keyboards. Windows is for everyone, gamers, office warriors, and anyone who just wants things to work without a PhD in settings. If you've ever seen the blue screen of death, congratulations. You've met Windows' dramatic way of saying, I need a nap. Next, Mac OS, -y, the James Bond of operating systems. Sleek, polished, and ridiculously good-looking. If Apple had a motto, it'd be, why have buttons when you can have gestures? Mac OS is the go-to for creatives, writers, and people who unironically say, I prefer the ecosystem. It's stable, secure, and has a dark mode so chic, it probably sips espresso. And the downside? Buying a MacBook costs roughly the same as a kidney. But hey, at least your Instagram photos will look fire. Designers, developers, and anyone who's ever used the word minimalist in a sentence, Mac OS is for them. Now, let's talk Linux. This is the OS that says, rules, where we're going, we don't need rules. It's open source, which means it's free, customizable, and built by geniuses who code in their sleep. Linux has thousands of versions called Destros. Want one that looks like Windows? Got it. One that runs on a toaster? Yep. One that requires you to type commands like a 90s movie hacker? Pseudo make me a sandwich. Who's it for? Programmers, privacy nerds, and people who think installing software via terminal is fun. Linux users are like vegans. They'll tell you they use Linux within five minutes of meeting you. Ever seen a Chromebook? That's Chrome OS, the OS that's basically a web browser with an identity crisis. It's lightweight, cheap, and perfect for binge-watching Netflix or writing that essay you forgot about until 11 p.m. Fun fact, Chromebooks have fewer viruses than a hypochondriac's medicine cabinet, mostly because even viruses are like, meh, not worth it. Students, casual users, and anyone who thinks storage is just a fancy word for Google Drive can go for Chrome OS. Meet FreeBSD, the OS that powers your Netflix binge sessions but never gets the credit. It's like Linux's older, quieter sibling who's obsessed with stability and security. Think of it as the Gandalf of operating systems. You shall not crash. FreeBSD users are the type to say, I ran my server for 10 years without rebooting and then flex harder than a gym influencer. Server wizards, networking geeks, and people who run websites without telling their parents are the real ones to use FreeBSD. Solaris is the OS your company uses but you've never heard of. Born in the Sun Microsystems era, RIP, it's built for big iron, supercomputers, databases, and systems that cost more than your house. Who's it for? Banks, NASA, and anyone who still owns a I love Java mug. Solaris is like that one teacher who loved pop quizzes. Unpredictable, kind of scary, but weirdly good at handling 10,000 tasks at once. Haiku OS is the hipster of operating systems. It's open source, lightweight, and designed to revive the glory days of BOS. Google it, Gen Z. It's so fast it boots quicker than you can say. Why does Windows take five minutes? Nostalgic nerds, retro tech lovers, and anyone who thinks old school is a personality trait can use Haiku OS. Haiku users are like vinyl collectors. They swear it just sounds better, even if nobody else gets it. React OS is what happens when developers reverse engineer Windows and yell, we can do it free. It's like a tribute band that almost sounds like the original. Want to run .x files without selling your soul to Microsoft? React OS has your back. React OS is still in beta, which is tech speak for, it might work, but don't blame us if your PC starts speaking Klingon. Who's it for? Open source fans, Windows nostalgics, and people who still play Minesweeper for the plot? Fuchsia is Google's secret project that's been coming soon since 2016. It's not Linux, it's not Android. It's a microkernel OS that might one day rule your smart fridge, toaster, and existential dread. Fuchsia's logo is a pink infinity symbol, which perfectly represents how long we'll wait for Google to explain what it's for. Google employees, tech conspiracy theorists, and anyone who's ever said, I'll beta test anything will use this OS. Meet Temple OS, the God's own operating system, created by programmer Terry Davis. This 64-bit OS is written entirely in Holy C? Yes, that's the language's actual name, and includes a flight simulator, a compiler, 
and a cow racing game. It's equal parts genius and madness, designed to be a third temple for divine communication. Temple OS is like a fever dream from the 1980s. Chaotic, colorful, and absolutely unforgettable. Just don't ask about the cows. Nostalgic coders, hobbyists, and anyone who misses the days of floppy disks use Serenity OS. Serenity OS is a love letter to 1990s computing. Built from scratch by a solo developer, it's a Unix-like OS with a custom kernel, browser, and even a snake game. It's like if Linux and Windows 95 had a baby that loved pixel art. Serenity OS proves you can reinvent the wheel and make it look like a retro roller skate. FreeDOS is the open-source reboot of MS-DOS. It's perfect for running ancient business software, retro games, or pretending you're in war games. No GUI, no multitasking, you know, just pure, unfiltered command-line nostalgia. Who's it for? Retro gamers, legacy software maintainers, and people who think C colon greater than is a fashion statement. FreeDOS users are the tech equivalent of vinyl collectors. They'll swear it's better, even if it takes 10 minutes to load Pong. Calibri OS is an OS written entirely in assembly language. It's so lightweight, it boots faster than your microwave heats popcorn. With 200 plus apps, including retro games, it's proof that sometimes less really is more. Calibri OS is the only OS that's smaller than the terms and conditions you never read. Assembly geeks, retro gaming fans, and anyone who thinks bloatware is a dirty word might need Calibri OS. IBM I, formerly AS400, is the OG Enterprise OS. It's been running critical business systems since the 1980s, handling everything from banking to inventory management. It's like the Chuck Norris of operating systems. It doesn't reboot, you reboot. IBM I users are the tech world's secret society. They'll casually mention they've maintained the same server since Y2K, and it still works. Who's it for? Corporate IT wizards, legacy system admins, and people who unironically say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Risk OS is the quirky British OS that powered Acorn computers in the 80s. It's still alive today, running on Raspberry Pis and ARM devices. With its single button mouse and drag and drop workflow, it's like a time capsule for retro computing. Who's it for? Raspberry Pi tinkerers, Acorn nostalgics, and anyone who unironically says, Cheerio Gue. Risk OS users are like Doctor Who fans. They're loyal, slightly eccentric, and obsessed with things that are older than the internet. Meet Minix, the tiny OS that's been chilling inside your Intel processor since 2008. Designed as a teaching tool, it's a Unix-like OS, so lightweight. It runs beneath your main OS. Think of it as your computer's secret basement where the Wi-Fi drivers party. Minix is the tech equivalent of finding a hidden room in your house. It's cool, but also kind of creepy that Intel never told us. Computer science students, hardware nerds, and people who think, wait, my CPU has what inside it, are going to use Minix.